Amen. Amen. This morning, I want to share with you what I call navigating life by still worship. Navigating life by what? Still worship. Life is full of so many things, so many bend, but you can navigate life by still worship. I like to read from Matthew Gospel 25. It's a very long reading, but I'm going to see how much I can read out of it. Matthew Gospel 25, verse 14 to 19. You know, the book of Matthew, the Matthew, the guy called Matthew, one of the apostles of Jesus Christ, happened to be a Jewish man. And Jewish people believe that Jesus is coming as a king. So, in the, in the book of Matthew, you will see the king or the kingdom. And the, many parables were said in the book of Matthew. You hear the kingdom of heaven is like the king has a party because he was presenting Jesus as a king of the kings. So, Matthew gospel this morning, there was a parable of talent. That's what we are going to be looking this morning, the, the parable of talent. 14, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servant and delivered his good to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. To each according to his ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then when we had received the five talents, went and traded with it and made another five talents. You will make profit this year. Yeah. And likewise, we have received two gain, two more also. We have received one, dug the ground and hid the lost money. And after the long time, the Lord of those servants came and set to account with them. So he, he who received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you are delivered to me five talents. Look, I have given more talent beside them. Verse 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You'll be faithful. You'll be faithful. So I'm speaking on still worship. Come and say still worship. Say, let me hear you. You know, our, our, our salvation... Our being born again is a work of grace. It's a work of what? Nothing make you get born again than Jesus. He died on the cross of Calvary. And um, what you need to know is that it is not because of your work that make you get born again. It's by his grace, by his work, by his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Salvation is so, gospel is so easy that people miss it. How can with all the sin I've committed, I will just confess Jesus and I become a child of God. That is how simple the gospel is. Amen. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave what? And whosoever what? Shall not what? But have what? I think that's the most powerful scripture in the entire scripture. So everybody that is a child of God that we have received salvation. We are born again. And we have been saved to serve him. We have been safe to be a blessing to others. You know, God met Abraham when he wanted to start a new nation called Israel. And he told Abraham, he said, I'm going to separate you from your family and I'm going to make sure you become a blessing. Not that I will bless you alone, you will also become what? A blessing. So, God is not going to give you two pairs of shoes. He wants to give you hundred so that you can become what? God did not want to give you hundred million. He wants to give you one billion so that you can become what? Now, so we are saved to be a blessing. Come and say, I'm saved to be a blessing. So you need to know that your life is supposed to be a blessing. Coming to the world today, coming to your family is to be a blessing. You are just an answer to question in your family. You are supposed to be a solution. Come and say, I'm a solution. Say, let me hear you. Every time your parent remember when you are giving birth, he's saying, God, I thank you for this, my daughter. I thank you for this, my son. I want you to look at yourself like the hope of the entire family is on you. And you will perform. Yeah. Come and say, I will perform. Listen to me. If you don't perform, some people will suffer. Are you with me? God is raising you up to be a blessing to your nation. To be a blessing to your community. Don't forget when we are running the series on parenting. I say, when you parent a child, that child should be a blessing to a nation. That child should be a blessing to people. And that is exactly what God has done for us. I will say that God has made you, made us to understand what he calls still worship. Come and say still worship. So let me hear you. From the parable we read, we saw the account of a man that was traveling and he gave talent, he gave gifts to his people to go and trade with it. 
Some of us are gifted, but we don't even realize what God has given to us. Amen? People are more gifted than each other. I have met so many people in my 36 years of being a pastor. I've seen people that are not very gifted, but with the little they have, they have done a lot with it. But I've met people that are very gifted, but they are not doing anything with their life. I speak over you today. God is laying hands on your gifts. And you will make that gift to be a blessing. That is something you have. Nobody is a wasted person in this world. Every human being, they are full of talent. They are full of glory. Come and say, I carry something. So let me hear you. Say, I am loaded so that I will be needed. Come and say, I am loaded. Say, let me say, I am loaded. Come and say, I am loaded. So you don't need to be intimidated by anybody. Are you with me? Is somebody hearing me now? If you think a lady is finer than you as a lady, there is something you have that that lady didn't have. I have told you, anybody bigger than you is too big. Anybody taller than you? Anybody darker than you? Come and say, I'm the best. Look at the boy say, I'm the best. Come and say, I'm the best. Don't feel intimidated by anybody. Praise God. Praise God. You are the best. So you are loaded. There is something in you. The word is waiting for you. Are you with me? There is something you carry that nobody else carry. Praise God. No years back, a young man came to me in our island church. She, the guy is a member. And he came to me with a lady is dating. This guy is like six feet. And the lady is dating like 5.2 feet. Are you with me? Praise God. When six feet and 5.2 is around them, do you know you look like a child abuse? How many of you know what I'm talking about? So I was asking the guy, why do you like this girl? So I just like a stature, that small stature, that's what I like. I said, wow. Praise God. An average people that are small like that, they feel intimidated by people. They feel people don't respect them. But God designed you for somebody. Come on, say, I'm made for somebody. So I want you to know that it's a Something God has packaged in you. That thing will manifest. Now, if God has packaged something in us, we have to be accountable. So, who is a steward? A steward is someone that administers the property or finance of any other, or somebody. A steward. Now, when we say steward, so which means everything I have today doesn't belong to me. It belongs to who? Your time belongs to who? Your talent belongs to you. So it's very, very important to understand. Paul was writing to Corinthian church. He said, moreover, it's required a steward that be found faithful. So when we say somebody is a steward, it means that you are an house manager, you are a free slave entrusted to manage things. And you can see that in the life of Joseph. Joseph was a slave that was captured. Am I right? And he was put in charge of the house of Potiphar. He was a, he was a senior messenger. He was in charge of everything. He dishes food to his, his boss. He's, he's not the owner of the food, but he's a, he's a steward. He's in charge. That is something God has put in you. God owned that thing. May you be able to manage it well. Your amen is weak. So, being faithful in what God has put in your life is very important. May you be faithful. There are talent God has given you. May you be faithful. There are five principles by which stewardship work. In, the, in Christendom. Number one, there's a principle of ownership. Come and say ownership. So nothing belongs to you. All belongs to who? All belongs to you. Your time belongs to who? Your money? Your talent? Do you know the children you think you, you are the owner? You are not the owner of that child. You are just a steward. Am I right? You can't do what you like with your child. If you misbehave over that child in some nations of the world, they will take the child from you. Praise God. Praise God. One of our members in London some years back beat his son with belts. You know, that's why they are, that's where how we are raised. We were raised. Am I right? How many of you, your parents beat you when you are young? Wave your hands. Wave it very well. Okay. Only everybody. Only me. Only one time. <laughs> Praise God. If you are a stubborn child, you must be beaten if you are raised in Africa. Am I right? African mother know how to slap, how to push, how to kick. Am I right? So, 
is an African man and he was raising the child in London and he let the child behave and he beat the child, bring birth and beat the child. When the child got to school, the, the, the teacher checked the body and said, what happened to you? He said, my daddy beat me with bed. He said, wow! What do you think happened? Social worker came to the house. They want to take the child from this man. You would think you are the owner of the child until you understand what I call still worship. Come and say still worship. Are you with me? You gave birth to those children, but it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to who? Say my children. Say my time. Say my money. Come and say my life. Belongs to God. That's a principle of ownership. Psalm 24. The earth is of the Lord and the what? And we know how God created this world. Amen. So if you think everything you have belongs to you, you are a joker. Are you with me? You know, the story was saying in 17, he said, don't think it is by your power you have got all this thing. Remember the Lord your God. It's him that gives you power to do what? To get wealth. So the first principle of, of this is ownership. God is the owner of everybody. Is what? That's why when we make money, we pay tight in church because we don't hold that money. We are just a steward. Praise God. And every time you pay tight in church, what you are telling God is that God, you are the owner of this money. Our agreement is that you take your own path for the kingdom. Are you with me? The second principle that guides to worship is the principle of trust. Principle of what? Trust. Come and say trust. The first principle of ownership. The second is principle of trust. You have been entrusted with all things by God. God has given you 24 hours. You can use it as you like, but you will give account. It's a principle of trust. Your child is given to you on trust. On what? On what? You have to raise that child for God. Amen. That's why you don't force your child to study a course. Since I want to be a medical doctor and I didn't know mathematics or know biology, I will raise this child. You must be a doctor. I've seen children that are doctor for their parents, but when they drop this certificate, they go and get what they want to do by themselves. Am I right? Because the parents don't know they have given that child on trust. Number two, there's a principle of temporariness. Everything in life is not permanent. Nothing is permanent. Principle of Ownership, principle of trust, principle of temporary. Everything, is, nothing is permanent. Your life is not permanent. You won't be here forever. Are you with me? It's sad to hear that one day they will put you in a boat, in a coffin. Six feet. Am I right? You don't like to hear that. But it's true. It's what? It's true. Over a year ago when my wife died, that was when that word made meaning to me. It's true. People will die. Everybody will die. Are you with me? You will lose. So that's why nothing is permanent. Your look is not even permanent. Am I right? Go and check yourself 20 years ago. Praise God. Are you with me? A young boy that was... That was uh, the father, the, 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 this boy, young boy, his father had him before he married another woman. So when this boy was now growing, one day he looked at the stepmother. The stepmother was getting older, and he looked at his daddy and said, why did you marry this woman? This woman is not beautiful. <laughs> you know, there are boys that talk. How many of you know what I'm talking about? This doesn't happen in Africa because if it happened in Africa, somebody will be slapped. Am I right? You know, in Africa, you don't say what you feel. Except your child you are raising now that will tell you anything. But when I was growing up, when you know something, you don't talk. Am I right? Praise God. Don't raise your kid like that. So that's a no school of reason. Let them talk. Tell them, say, let them talk. And the father said, This woman you saw was not like this before. And the man brought a photograph of the woman when they got married. He said, wow! You mean this woman is like this? Say, yes. Because nothing is permanent. Your look is not permanent. Am I right? Are you with me? There are people today that are bothered. They are, they are not like that before. If you see hair on their head when they were young, it's big. But little by little, the thing was going. Little by little. If you have anybody bothered around you, say, sorry. 
Praise God. Are you with me? Because it's a principle of temp- nothing is permanent. Your look is not permanent. Your body may not be permanent. Praise God. Are you with me? There are some mothers today who are already size 16, 18, 22. But these women, these people say started with size 6, size 8. You'll be shocked how people can be transformed. Amen. And it's good if you are transformed because God is increasing you. Are you with me? From glory to what? <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. Number four principle, a principle of accountability. Principle of what? Everything will be accountable. We're going to give account to everything. Every talent, our time, our money, our opportunity, we're going to give account. Nothing is for you. You won't give account. There's a day of accountability. Where are you going to render account? The gift and the talent God has given to you. We are going to give account. Amen. Number five principle is the principle of reward. Principle of what? There's a reward for everything we do in this world. Revelation 22, 12 says, Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. So if that is the case, we need to be careful. We need to be sure of what we are doing. There are five areas where we need to be accountable. Number one, our time. Come and say time. Come and say time. You know time is life. Time is what? If, you, if somebody dies today, they want to know how old. He said our mother spent 75 years on the face of earth. Time is life. Don't allow anybody to waste your time. Don't allow anybody to waste your time. Anybody wasting your time is wasting your life. Are you with me? There are two things you can do with time. You either invest it or you waste it. You either hold what? And you know time is very equalized. It's an equalizer in life. Everybody has 24 hours. The rich, the poor, they all have what? So how do you manage your time? What do you do with your time? That's why you must be careful what you are doing with your time. It's very, very important to make sure you invest your time well. Tell your person invest your time well. For a businessman, time is money. For a man of destiny, time is life. Now, the HR, they will calculate that we're going to be hiring you to work for us for eight hours per, per day, five times 40 hours per week. If you do that, this is what we'll pay you. So, businesses, money is calculated per time. Time is a unit of life. Time. Come and say time. Come and say my time shall not be wasted. So, let me hear you. So, that's why you must manage your time. You must invest your time. You must be conscious of time. Number be what? People of destiny always have two things. Number one, they have a risk watch. They must be checking time. Because time is moving. Life is moving when your time is moving. Your time will not be wasted. You know, devil will deceive people that I'm still, I'm still young. I am still young. Before you know it, you're already old. When a child is born, it started growing. Four years old. Am I right? You know, sometimes when people are doing birthday, we want to make them happy. We say our sister is just 32 years young. Am I right? It's a lie. You may look young, but you are not young. Look at everybody say how young you are. Is that a correct English? Look at him and say how old you are. People don't want you to say I'm old. Don't tell me I'm old. Praise God. That's why they say a lady is always 16. Am I right? Sweet 16. Every time he must be young. Praise God. And so many industries have been built for us to look young. Praise God. Are you with me? Makeup have been designed for us to look what? Young. When people put makeup on their face, wow. They make them up. Am I right? Which way they are down already? That's why they call it make what? (laughs) <laughs> and that is why you need to be conscious of time you need to know time is moving what am I doing with my time you see that's why Psalm is in Psalm 90 the Moses wrote that Psalm he said teach us to number what teach us to number what I hope you know God never created years he created days 
Seven days makes one week. Teach us to number our days. This is the day that the Lord has made. He didn't say this is the year the Lord has made. So he wanted to number our days. Every day of your life, time is moving. Ask your neighbor, what are you doing with your time? So you must learn to plan your life. Come and say, plan your life. Live your life. Live your plan. You must live a life of planning. Western world. You see a child of 21, a, a young man of 19, already designed a harp that is helping the whole nation. Yeah, when somebody is doing well on time, people say, hey, maybe you will soon die. Don't listen to that thing. You will, you will make it. Come and say, I will make it on time. Lift up your hands and say, on time blessing. On time grace. On time favor. It's coming upon me. You know, in Africa, if somebody build a house at 22 and is making money at 22, the parent will say, ah, this child, we need to pray for him. You know, we, we believe that we don't achieve things until we are old. And when he's old, you are old. He's late. It will not be late for you. Yeah. Imagine a man of 68 just building his first house. What is going to enjoy it? Have you discovered the moment you reach 40, they will tell you something food you should not eat. But before 40, there is no money to eat. Praise God. He'll tell you, now that you are 40, you need to stop eating meat. You need to stop. I said, what? <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Praise God. As when you reach certain age, if you are living in a duplex, you will enjoy it. Climbing upstairs and coming out. You now want a bungalow house. Ah, can I prophesy to somebody? Before it's too late, you will break through. Before it is too late, you will break through. That's why you must plan your life. You must do what? Plan your life. Know how many children you need to have you can raise. So that you won't use all your life to raise children. So if you want to have six children, five children, I asked a lady with a husband, they were planning to get married. I said, how many children do you have? She said, I want five. I said, what? What? So you will use your life to train children? Are you fine? Praise God. Because they don't know that time goes. Ha! Before your time goes, you will achieve something. Yeah. What does that mean? It means that you must schedule life. You must have a schedule. Every night, I write down what I want to achieve next day. One, two, three, four, five. And when I woke up, when, I, when I'm closing the day, did I achieve all this time? Do you know that people that have no schedule? They just live their life anyhow. Are you with me? People can just bunk into your destiny, to your life anyhow. I see your life as a destiny. You will not miss it. You will not miss it. When I was much, much younger, when I heard people are 50, I used to think that's a old age. How many of you feel like that? Yeah, the man is 50. Oh, that's an old man. But I just find myself 50. I said, what? What's going on here? Praise God. One day, my baba was bobbing my hair and I, I was watching and I discovered hair is moving from my head. Ah! I said, what is wrong? When I read it online, I discovered that it's a sign that you are getting old. Hmm. Before your time go, there will be something on ground. Your amen is weak, oh. When my son told me that I'm going to be get, I want to get married, Daddy, I said, "You." I was still thinking that boy that we carry some days. I said, "Wow, Amos, you are getting what? Time is moving." Shout to your neighbor, say, "Time is moving." You have to plan your life. So, one of the signs of someone going far is ability to plan your time. To manage your time. Not to waste time. Amen. You are a young lady. A guy is dating you. And one year, two years, he's not saying something. Get out of that relationship. He's a time waster. He's a what? What is his name? Another name is a destiny waster too. Are you with me? One 19-year-old girl was talking to me. He said, I have a boyfriend. I said, when are you getting married? He said, maybe in five years. What are you going to be doing with someone for five years? Praise God. Don't you
Don't you know that's it? You have started trouble already. Because they missed, when you date somebody for five years, there will be combined service. There will be what? Are you with me? You'll be sleeping with together. Am I right? You're a Christian, but you'll be reading Psalm every time you finish doing it. You speak in the rainbow, you say, tongue will not be taken when you finish doing it. And when a man has eats the forbidden fruit, your value drop immediately. Am I right? If I enter a car park today and I bought a, buy a car and I drive it out, when I come back, the value has dropped. Praise God. I bought a car in America some two years ago and I wanted to reset the car. They destroyed the price. I said, what? He said, because you are driven it, your value has gone. Who will like a car they have driven and tired? May God deliver us from Tokumbo. Yeah. And that is why time is important. Come and say time. Come and say time. You know, the value of people is youthfulness. In your youth, you will achieve things. Your amen is weak, oh. In your youth, you will achieve things. So manage your time. Tell your person, manage your time. Tell your person, manage your time. The second area you need to manage your time is your talent. Your talent. Come and say your talent. You must be accountable to your talent. You must be a steward of talent. Come and say talent. God has given everybody talent. He has given you what? He has given you talent. That is a gift in you. That is something you carry. I speak over you. That, that talent you carry will turn to favor. Your amen is weak. Yeah. You know, God has given people special talent. They can calculate. They are intelligent. Talent is different from skill. Talent is something that God gives to you from heaven. Amen. Yeah. And when you know how to manage those talents, it can, it can help you. The Bible calls it gifts. You call it what? Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. 1 Peter 4, 10. Every man had received gifts, even so minister the same one to another as a good steward of the manifold grace of God. So there are gifts in you. That gift will manifest. With the talent in you, you will rise. Come and say, I will rise. Come and say, I will rise. I don't know the talent you have. Maybe you can sing, you can change, you can calculate, you can do administration. You are any talent you use. You must make sure you use it for his glory. Am I right? Now, in church like this, we use our talent. Some people are setting the equipment there. It's their talent. Praise God. Some are singing. One of our ladies just sang right now. And you feel the presence of God when she was singing. Am I right? That's a talent God has given to her. Some of you have talent that you are not using for God. And God is going to ask you. I send you to ACC Solution Arena. You can be in ushering, you never join. You can calculate, you can never join. You can organize, you never join. You can clean the house, you never join. Because people have talent. People have different talent. Praise God. Praise God. I pray for you. May you understand what I'm sharing this morning. So, those two things I've shared in this second service, first second service, I'm going to continue on it in the third service. But the fourth thing I want you to put in your mind that you are going to give account of everything God has given to you. Your talent, your gift, and your time. Come and say, my time. And to manage your time, you must have a schedule every day. You must have what? You must have a schedule. You must have timetable. What you do per day. Don't live your life like you do what you like every day. No. Have a schedule. Have a plan for your life. In five years, I want to do this. Another five years, I want to do this. Another five. I, you have a plan. God work with your plan. God will not plan your life for you. You will plan your life for yourself. Amen. God knows you have a plan. God knows his, his plan for you, but you must discover that plan. And you must plan your life. By a 20, I want to achieve this. By a 30, I want to achieve it. Nothing is too early for you. Because God's grace is on you. And I speak over somebody that you feel like time has moved before. 
Favor is coming over your life. God will redeem your time for you. I said, God will redeem your time for you. Oh, pastor, don't you know that my time has gone? I said, God can redeem your time for you. I said, God can redeem your time for you. Look at Rachel. Rachel was dating Jacob for 14 years. How many years? For the first seven years, after seven years, household enemy con con they conspire and make sure Leah married the wife, the husband he had dated for seven years. She waited another seven years, making 14 years. How many years? Dating one man for how many years? 14 years. But what did God did? God made sure the child that came out of her womb is a child that delivered the entire world. Amen. Joseph. Am I right? Nobody give their children Reuben today. So much. There are no, if I say how many Reuben here? No. But if I say how many Joseph? You see many people. Because Joseph became the one that breakthrough. I speak over you. No matter how long time has gone, God is giving you restoration. God is giving you restoration. Rise from your feet this morning. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. There is hope for somebody today. I said there is hope for somebody today. I said there is hope for somebody today. May the grace to redeem time fall upon you. May you maximize your life. May you maximize your life. May you maximize your life. You, your life. you will not miss your time. Your time will be useful for God. You will be an instrument in the hand of God. In the name of Jesus. Say a better amen.